guys what's up in this video i'm going to talk about dev mode and obviously we have to talk about dev mode because it comes handy when we're trying to talk about handoff with developers and which is why this is going to go into the handoff section for my course but one thing again i may actually upload this video on youtube as well for some other people to learn about dev mode and some of the recent changes that have been introduced in dev mode and how um, it may be useful for some people we're also going to talk about whether it actually is useful and whether you should actually invest in it because it's no longer free as we know if we actually have a look at some of the pricing for dev mode this is what the pricing actually looks like so we have the professional plan organization plan and enterprise plan you can't really use dev mode in the free plan so you need to be any, in any of these plans in order to use them i don't think the organization or the enterprise is really useful uh, for most people in general but for larger organizations it may be useful who are creating their own plugins or actually syncing with the rest api to trigger some actions uh, but for starters i think just a professional mode would actually really help this video is going to help you make a decision on whether to actually upgrade to figma if you're on the free plan for dev mode particularly um, so and again you can actually just have i think your developers on the dev mode as well if you want them and i think that's going to probably be half the cost or something along those lines i'm not really sure you can probably check that out uh, now coming to a design like i have untitled ui in front of me because i wanted to keep this video generic rather than specific to my course uh, so how do you actually access dev mode you can access dev mode by going to the top right and clicking this button you can similarly also just press shift d to actually access the dev mode at the top right you can basically see which language you you're choosing and which units you're actually choosing pixels or rem like in which uh, particular language and units uh, unit conversions do you actually want to see your code if you actually select the element sometimes people may see something like this where they may actually see that i don't really see any code where is the code uh, what you actually see are for example whether the name of the the file you have the properties you have the layout you have fills obviously you can copy them and paste them directly you have the shadows and you basically have the selection colors within this which is something that you actually see in css as well and in uh, figma when you're not in dev mode you also see some of the assets as well like for example the different components that are actually used in this particular com um, design the three components and you can just click on this button to actually go to the main component but now if you want to see the code you can just go here uh, and by default i think code is selected by default but let's say if you have overridden overridden it accidentally you can just go back and you can just select code if you select code you can actually see the code that's there for let's say css if you want to use let's say ios swift ui you can actually convert that and you're going to have swift ui code you can do the same for android and you can have the compose code as well we can obviously stick with css and just have a look at it similarly if you have a look at it you have some other settings as well which are unit settings so you can actually say that i don't really want pixels i actually want rem so most of the stuff that you actually see here <clears throat> is going to be converted into rems so those are just some of the handy things that you can actually do obviously you can see the padding you can have the spacing definitely there you have the colors there if i go to a particular component you can see the styles of the component but now let's talk about more interesting things so one of the interesting things that i think is by far one of the most beneficial features of this is you don't really have to go to all of the states to look at what this component looks like like for example i can actually just click on open in playground and it's going to it already shows me that this is a component it has these different properties it has these different size prop uh, size values it has these different hierarchy values these are the icons like if you, you can actually enable them disable them to actually have a look at them if you want a leading icon it's going to look like this if you want a trailing icon it's going to look like this and you can obviously even change the icons if you want to to just play around with it so this is a really beneficial feature additionally what you can also do is you now have annotations and measurements so you can actually see the measure property here and you can see the annotations here annotations are really useful if let's say you want to highlight something like for example i am just going to press shift t for annotations and i can go let's say i want to say something like this for example check i want to say that this is going to use a border or a box shadow or something along those lines i can say that and i can highlight let's say the stroke well actually it doesn't use the box shadow i can say this is going to use a stroke and i can highlight that particular stroke so any developer who actually comes here now sees that this particular element actually uses a stroke similarly i can say that this 
is going to be a component and I can highlight certain specific properties if I actually want to or I can just go ahead and obviously uh, highlight some of the other values. So I can actually just highlight the component here and it shows that this is the particular component. Before we go forward, I would like to highlight the course that this video is coming from. So if you're interested in obviously detailed and in-depth videos, um, and obviously my direct support and my team support, then you can definitely check out this course. Um, I'm also gonna give a 50% discount if you use the AM subscriber voucher code and obviously it's gonna be accessible to those who are looking at this video. So yeah, I mean, definitely check that out. I think it's gonna be worth your time if you wanna bump up your Figma game here so developers can obviously go ahead and check it out i can obviously click on it and delete it if i don't want to display it similarly you have the measure tool which you can obviously select by using shift m if i let's say want to have the uh spacing here or the height here or spacing from the edge or something along those lines i can actually showcase that but now as you can see it just shows one because i have it in rem so i can just go ahead and actually choose pixels for this particular exercise i can also say okay the height is probably something like this i don't really want this to overlap the x icon so i can actually move it a bit outwards so i can do all of this magical stuff directly here similarly i can say i want to show showcase the padding and the spacing in between um in this footer so from the top it's like 32 from the bottom it's 24 so i don't need to use a plugin i don't need to do anything i can just press shift m and i can highlight these things for developers but one thing i want to highlight if a developer actually knows how to use figma and if you're a developer and you're looking and you're taking my course or looking at this video you ideally should know how to use figma and if you know how to use figma then this dev mode and these padding values and these highlights wouldn't really again matter that much because you can obviously see what the spacing is just by clicking on the button and just pressing option and you would be able to detect what the spacing in between is what the values are what the size is and all of that stuff so it's not really useful there for annotations it is useful but i don't really know how many people are actually annotating things the playground thing is definitely very beneficial Another really useful feature of this dev mode is actually you can have two different examples of very similar designs. Like for example, this is V1, this is V2, and I can click on both of them or select both of them and compare the changes. So as you can see, it says that the button destructive, this particular button was added, the text was changed. It also shows some of the styles here, if you can actually have a look at them. And it shows that this button was actually removed. So it's showing me all of those details that's really easy for me to see. And it even sh shows at the top that this layer was removed and I can just go ahead and play around with things. So all of this is really useful. So apart from that, what else do we have in dev mode? Well, one other useful thing that we have in dev mode are plugins. But one thing I'll just let you know, you have plugins by default as well. You can use the Anima plugin and you can use some of the other plugins to actually export your Figma designs directly to code without using dev mode. But let's say if you are using dev mode, you obviously have some of these plugins handy. You can basically just click on them. If I click on this Figma to code HTML, Tailwind, Flutter, it's just gonna give me all of the code and I can just copy it and paste it in my HTML files. Um, if this is an HTML code, obviously if I deselect the React, it's gonna be HTML code. If I select React, it's gonna be the React code. This is a really nice tool because it actually helps me uh, customize the classes, classes for example, uh, to Tailwind. If I don't do the Tailwind, it's gonna have some weird sizes uh, because some of the sizes are actually not relevant to Tailwind CSS, but I can say, hey, I wanna round this off to Tailwind values and it's gonna do that and use the default Tailwind classes for the most part. I can also export this code in HTML. I can export this code in Flutter or Swift UI, and I can select some of the other things as well if I actually want to. This is a really useful plugin. The other useful plugin is actually Anima, which is Figma to code. So you can actually just select whatever you want to select and it's gonna run Anima. And then what it's gonna do, it's actually gonna allow you to export this design either to Anima's platform or you can actually export it directly to your own local instance and basically just run this project. It's very easy. You basically select the element, you say download selection and you can just export this. Here you see the index CSS file, you see the style.css file, you see the style guide.css. And as you can see, this is generating it in React. I can also say I wanna generate it in React, but Tailwind CSS, and it's gonna do that too. And it's gonna generate that code for me. If I just, let's say, close this dropdown. Now, if we just have a look at some of the styles, 
this actually is not just generating one file it will tell you it's actually generating tons of files here because as you can see this is a background pattern component there's going to be a background pattern component generated here as well this is the modal header component and actually let me just go ahead and download this selection so i can show you how this actually looks so we're going to wait for the code to be exported so we can just see right in front of us how this is actually looking when we actually have this implemented and this download with us Hey guys so here's the code that uh, anima generated and i'm just going to open it directly so here is the code and one other thing i actually want to showcase but before before that i'm just going to run this so i'm going to run an npm install on this particular uh, directory and it's going to ins install some of the useful packages and then i'm just going to do an npm run dev to actually run it locally so hopefully this shouldn't take really long okay so it's done we're just going to go ahead and do an npm run dev and it's gonna run the dev mode using parcel and there you go there it is we're just gonna go ahead and actually copy this particular link or we can command click on it and here we have the design basically now as you can see there are some things that definitely aren't perfect this circle got messed up but it's just like minor css that basically messed it up which is the border so some export may not necessarily be perfect so if we just remove that and then obviously we can configure this but what's amazing in this particular thing actually not which is something that not a lot of people do do really know is if we actually go to the modal so these are the modal actions it actually went ahead and copied and it has the knowledge of all the props that are there as well so for example if i say that hey i want this these buttons to be destructive so I say destructive and it actually when goes ahead and up updates it. It also has the hover states here as well. The checkbox is also working even though it's like not visually perfect. But I mean this, this is working. Similarly, I can say I want to do a divider. I enable the divider. We have a divider wrap which obviously doesn't appear for some reason. As you can see, it actually went, went ahead and did an SVG export, which is not ideal, but it's doing a few things here and there. Now, as we can see, this is definitely not perfect. I can say that the tertiary button should be true. So a tertiary button gets added here. So it's trying its best, but it's still not doing the job. A lot of people may be impressed by how awesome this is. I unfortunately am not, which is why for these reasons, I don't really think dev mode is 100% worth your time right now based on how crappy some of the plugins are. <laughs> and it's just like strange to me how a lot of people are actually impressed by this stuff. Um, it's still beneficial if obviously you can get it for free you're working in an organization then by all means use it but if you're on a strict budget then you can actually do a much better job uh, by exporting these things directly yourself a few other things that you can actually do with the dev mode and now this is interesting because figma keeps on marketing it but it's not really impressive again so if we actually go to a figma plugin so once you actually go to your extensions you can actually download the figma for vs code plugin it's going to allow you to actually log in to your figma or connect vs code to your figma account then it's going to show a bunch of your files here and i can just go to let's say the untitled ui file that we were viewing so you can actually view the figma design file directly here i can go to a specific page here as well i basically have the last page that we were playing with with the modal example and i can directly go here and as you can see we have the certain examples here for the modal v1 the modal v2 now one thing that you're going to notice right off the bat this is extremely slow I mean, this is really hard, They're extremely slow, hard to use. And if I, let's say, just click on it, as you can see, this modal isn't even rendering properly. And let me just go ahead and actually uh, hide the terminal. So this modal isn't even rendering properly. I don't even see my modal actions. So definitely not ideal. I think they're probably going to appear sometime soon. So let's just wait for them to appear. So there you go, they are here now. So I can just go here, I can click on any particular element. I can see the padding directly here. I can see the colors that are used. I can see the properties here, but this is comparatively very laggy compared to Figma. So obviously if you're in Figma, it's much easier to play around with things to view the layers. You can view the layers here as well. So I can view all of the layers in this particular thing that I have. Uh, and I can, let's say, go see the mask, go see specific elements. So it's 
I mean, you can potentially do these things, but it's not easy. Similarly, one other useful thing that's here is if I actually, let's say, select this uh, check circle, I can actually go to my assets and I can see, okay, this is the circle that's being used and I can download it or export it. And it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna save this SVG circle directly in the public images folder? And I am gonna say, okay, let's go ahead and do that. And now if we just head back to our files and we go to our public and images folder, as you can see, we have the check circle directly imported into our, uh, obviously a uh, document or into our uh, development folder. So there are certain things that actually help and make dev mode slightly useful, but I still think it has a long way to go to be actually useful for me, but it may be useful for you. Uh, some of these things and it may be impressive, but definitely not for me. So yeah, that's pretty much it I mean, these are the two or three plugins that are the most useful here the anima figma to code the figma to code HTML tailwind flutter Those are the two top plugins that I personally know and then obviously you have the plugin uh, or the uh, Extension directly the figma to vs code extension directly here Which is going to allow you to access some of the elements and some of the things directly within VS Code. So you can go ahead and import them or you just don't have to basically uh, go back and forth in Figma. So that's pretty much it. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon. Let me know if you found this video useful and if you need any other help in terms of the handoff process.